Today we're going to talk about my recovery from pacemaker surgery. Welcome to the sideboard vlog. Let's talk about my recovery from the pacemaker surgery. So as I stated in the previous video about my overnight stay at the hospital, after my discharge I was sent home and they gave me a, a sling to wear uh, at night and to remind me not to use my left arm you know lifting heavy things and things like that so having to sleep with that on what took a little bit of adjusting to you know I was kind of uncomfortable at first you know it was kind of pulling around my neck I, I couldn't get comfortable at sleep the first few nights but after a little while I got used to it I did also try to wear the sling at work the first day back and I found myself just getting an arm cramp and shoulder cramp from keeping it immobile too long. And at work, I my range of motion that I do with my arm, you know, it usually involves typing, working on a computer, and I'm not always out lifting things. So I found it more of a hindrance at work, and I was pretty good about not doing things I shouldn't with my arm while I was at work. One thing I did have to change after my pacemaker surgery was the shirts I was wearing to work. Before I'd wear a polo shirt and because of my limited range of motion with my arm I decided to change it to um, these button-up shirts because they're a little bit easier to, to take on and off without um, raising my arm up like I wasn't supposed to. And after doing that for uh, a few weeks it felt strange at first but I got used to it and I actually liked them uh, a little bit better now. After recovering at home for 10 days and taking it easy when I went back to work, it was time to go for the wound check is what they called it. It's when they took the dressing off the actual um, site of the, the surgery so I saw my scar for the first time. And uh, when he did take it off, it was actually a lot smaller uh, than I thought it was going to be. You know, it, it looked kind of like just a scratch and he said it looked good. and. I thought it was pretty well healed for only being 10 days old and after he did that he hooked up the uh, the laptop to interrogate the um, pacemaker they put the reader over my chest and that was the first time he actually made adjustments to it and did things on the laptop that I could feel in my chest he um, went ahead and did a dual chamber pace on it and I could feel you know, it felt like a uh, punch in the chest. I could feel the flutter, and it was kind of a strange sensation that somebody was able to control it from outside my body, and that was a little strange. He um, also told me that they set the low threshold for my heart rate to 60 beats per minute, and that I was also only pacing about 11% of the time, and that was a single chamber pace, um, that was the purpose I got the the pacemaker for because the uh, the top of the heart would beat and the AV node block would prevent the nerve from sending the signal down to the, the lower chamber for it to beat. So 11% of the time, mainly at night while I was sleeping, that's when it was pacing the bottom chamber like it was intended. So I asked some more questions about restrictions and what I was and was not able to do and he said after that wound check that I was cleared to go ahead and start exercising again mainly just walking no weightlifting and that I was using based on my usage the battery should last about um, nine years eleven months and after that he told me uh, no scuba diving and try not to hit the uh, pacemaker area you know like if I'm playing sports or something like that try not to to have anything impact that area but besides that he said it was all clear and I could uh, besides lifting heavy things I could go back to my normal routine which include showering now that the uh, the um, dressing was removed and so when I got home that day that's the first thing I did was took a shower and I still had orange you know the iodine was still kind of all over my body because you know, the little sponge baths I was taking weren't really um, I wasn't able to really scrub all that off and even with soap water you know multiple washes still took a little while for all that orange to, to finally wash off 
The next day, I started my exercise routine again. Previously, the cardiologist told me I should walk about 150 minutes a week, which is you know two and a half hours, and at about a five, four and a half to five mile an hour pace. So, doing that, walking a mile in about 15 minutes, is uh, the pace he wanted me to get. And when I first attempted that after the surgery, after my 10 day checkup and being cleared to exercise again, I noticed that when I would take a step, you know, the, the momentum of my body, my chest, muscle, and skin, when it would pull down, it would be pretty uncomfortable. And so I had to back down from my normal pace and I took it easy for a little while. And really that discomfort stuck around for a while and it took a good few weeks, uh, maybe a month, before I was back into my normal um, routine for exercising and getting at the uh, 14 and a half minute mile that I was trying to achieve. So the last topic I want to talk about in this video is driving after the surgery. While I was cleared to drive, I still wasn't supposed to use my arm very much, but one of the things I really have to get used to, and I'm still working on that, is the seat belt, the shoulder strap, falls right across the area where my pacemaker is under the skin and the, the scar. And that's pretty uncomfortable, especially at first when the wound was still kind of fresh and the scar hadn't healed fully. It was very sensitive. It was kind of like getting a, like a, a burn, like a sunburn, rug burn, kind of every time the, the seat belt would hit there. So I'd kind of adjust the way I was sitting, but and I'd try to move the belt strap but without trying to just take it off and put it under my arm where it wouldn't be as effective. I still wanted to, to be, wear the seat belt correctly. And eventually what I had to do was I had to grab whatever was in the car, like I had a jacket, I'd put the jacket right here so that when the seat belt went across it would, it would be held off my chest a little bit to keep it from rubbing on that area. And uh, one time I had, I didn't have the jacket in the car, so I grabbed a, one of my daughter's stuffed animals as like a beanie baby. So I have a beanie baby sitting here um, riding in the car with me while I'm driving. So I bet anybody that drove by and saw that thought it was kind of weird. You are weird. Having a, a stuffed animal <laughs> belted in with me. So those are some of the things I experienced recovering at home from my pacemaker surgery. Every day, every week, things get a little bit easier and I get more back to normal. And um, you just have to realize that you're going to live with having something implanted underneath your chest there. And, you know, sometimes when people give you a hug, they might bump it or, you know, every doing everyday things that you're um, not really used to having discomfort. You know, there's a, a tiny, tiny little bit of discomfort, but it's getting better as the weeks go on. And in my next video, I'm going to talk about two issues I've had with the pacemaker. And I wouldn't really call them problems. Um, they were not malfunctions, but they were things that were not operating optimally for me. And I talked about those things with the cardiologist, and we got those things corrected. So in my next video, I'll talk, go into more detail about what those two issues I had with the pacemaker were. Subscribe now. Resistance is futile.